Hello, for our video today we are looking at the rate of action of enzymes and how that rate might be affected by different factors. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at how we measure enzyme controlled reactions. Here I've got a conical flask and in that flask I have some enzyme and some substrate. Enzymes can be extracted from living things so this is quite a feasible experiment that you could do and one way in which you could measure the rate of the reaction that was going on is by measuring the amount of gas that is produced so if it's a reaction that produces gas you can actually uh, collect the gas in something like this this is a uh, gas syringe you may have seen one in school and that can measure the amount of gas it's given off something else we could do is maybe also measure mass lost or mass loss of substrate. If it's something that's easy to do, we can measure that as well. But either way, these are two examples of ways in which you could measure the rate of a enzyme controlled reaction. If we're measuring the amount of gas production, you can imagine we'd get a graph that looks something like this. Um, as time goes on, you get more and more and more gas produced until all the substrate runs out and therefore no more gas is produced. You have reached the maximum amount of gas that you're going to produce. We could have a graph for our mass loss that might look something like this. So if you're measuring how much substrate has been lost as the uh, reaction proceeds, you might have a graph that looks like this. The mass goes down as time goes on and then it flattens out at a certain point. Here is flattened out at a point above zero because maybe we're measuring the whole apparatus not just the substrate uh, but if we were measuring just the substrate it might then actually go down to zero at the end of the reaction okay so that's just uh, a couple of ways in which we could measure a rate of an enzyme controlled reaction so imagine we were doing that and we were looking at gas produced so we've got enzyme plus substrate here we've got gas being collected here and we're collecting it over a five minute interval and we're doing it for different temperatures so we start a temperature of zero and we go all the way up to 60 degrees in intervals of 10 degrees we then change that into a rate of reaction and a rate always involves time so the rate of anything must involve an amount and a time and we've changed the gas produced in five minutes to centimeters cubed of gas every minute and that's just a case of dividing by five because we've got five minutes five centimeters cubed produced in five minutes means one centimeters cubed per minute so we're going to use the rate of reaction versus the temperature and our graph would end up looking something like this okay so this point here is where the graph peaks and we can see that's around about 40 degrees i haven't put the numbers in because that's not the most important thing i want to look at but that peaks at 40 degrees at an amount of 3.4 centimeters cubed per minute remember it's this number this column we're looking at there okay so usually we think that when we raise a temperature of a reaction the reaction will get faster and faster and faster and faster and just keep getting faster but for an enzyme controlled reaction that doesn't actually happen when we get above a certain temperature the rate of reaction rapidly declines and we need to be able to understand and explain why that happens. So here we are, we've got our graph, I've split it up into several different parts, five different parts in fact, and we're going to look at what's going on in each different part. So four parts one and two, I've put those together. We have our enzyme, which is our uh, purpley lilac shape, uh, colored shape there, and we have our substrate. And as you know from a previous video, the substrate has to collide with the enzyme in order for a reaction to happen. So that substrate must meet or join with the active site for the reaction to happen. I haven't drawn the product in here because I think it would get a bit crowded and confusing. But what we have is at a very low temperature, um, the enzyme molecules and substrate molecules are moving around. They have kinetic energy, but they don't have very much kinetic energy. That's because the temperature is low. So the number of collisions, therefore, is low. The substrate and enzyme is less likely to collide at lower temperatures. As we raise the temperature higher to number two, we can imagine the kinetic energy increases. Therefore, the number of successful collisions 
increase and therefore we get an increased rate of reaction. Now something uh, unusual happens at um, at the peak of the reaction here. We can see that we'll have a higher temperature so there'll, have, there'll be much more kinetic energy in the enzyme molecules and in the substrate molecules but that's not the only effect that we have. We also have, if you look at this enzyme molecule here, we can see that the active site has changed. And this is because the heat energy that's provided not only makes the enzyme molecules move around faster and the substrate molecules move around faster, but it also causes vibrations within the enzyme molecule itself. So while the enzyme molecules are moving faster, we're also getting increased vibration within the molecule and that vibration gets so violent that at some point we have the breaking of bonds and it's the breaking of the bonds that hold the active site in the correct shape and remember the shape of the active site is very imperative it's very important for the enzyme to work if that active site is not the correct shape it won't be able to work on the substrate as you can see Oops. As you can see here, that substrate no longer fits. Okay, so what we have is an enzyme that has lost its shape and the active site is no longer able to catalyze that reaction. We say that the enzyme is denatured. That's an important keyword for you to learn. And remember, whatever you do, don't say that the enzyme has been killed. We don't treat this as a living thing in itself. We say it's been denatured. And this change is permanent. You cannot get the active site back to its original shape again once you've uh, destroyed it in this way. Okay, so when we move on then to part four, we can see that more and more of the uh, enzyme molecules becoming denatured we've got a much slower rate of reaction one or two might be able to resist that rise in temperature but by the time we get to number five we can see that all of the enzymes have become denatured the active site on all the enzymes have changed this enzyme is no longer able to catalyze that reaction the reaction stops and that's why it's important for your body temperature not to be raised too much simply because the enzymes work at an optimum temperature of around about 37 degrees and if we go too high above that that's going to cause these enzymes not to be able to work. It's important to remember also there are some uh, enzymes that can work at higher temperatures uh, for example in certain bacteria that live in hot springs and they would have a graph that would shift much more towards the higher end of the temperature scale. The enzymes would get denatured eventually um, but that would be at much higher temperatures. Okay so you should be able to explain how temperature affects the rate of reaction, how raising the temperature will increase the rate of reaction to a certain point after which the enzymes start to become denatured and the reaction stops. Now another factor that can affect the rate of a chemical reaction is the pH of the solution in which the reaction is happening. So here I've got a graph showing pH with a neutral in the middle, 14 at the alkali end and 1 at the acidic end. And here is an enzyme that works really well at a pH of around about neutral. So you can see at neutral we have a peak over here and that's the best pH for the enzyme to work at. Sometimes we have enzymes that work at best at higher pH. So these are enzymes that work best in alkali conditions and sometimes we have enzymes that work best in acidic conditions. An uh, enzyme that works at quite an extreme acidic condition in your body is an enzyme called pepsin and this is found in the stomach and helps the digestion process in the stomach and that works best at around about a pH of 2. So you can see if the pH goes too high it's going to not work anymore. You have to be able to explain why a change in the pH might affect the enzyme. So similarly to before, here's an enzyme working normally. Uh, the active site is the correct shape and you can imagine this would work quite happily uh, within its correct pH range. If however the pH goes too high or too low, similar to temperature, we get a change in the active site.
and as you know anything that changes the shape of that active site is going to denature the enzyme So this has now become denatured and it's important to remember that denaturing or the when an enzyme becomes denatured it's permanent you can't uh, fix that enzyme molecule again but this has been denatured and why has it been denatured well one of the kind of bonds that we have in the enzyme is called the ionic bond we also have lots of hydrogen bonds and these uh, rely on charges and if we change the pH, what we're doing is increasing the amount of hydrogen ions in the concentration. So that hydrogen ion there you can see has charge. And changing the pH will uh, increase if we become more acidic, the uh, number of hydrogen ions. If we have a higher pH, that increases the number of hydroxide ions. And both of those types of ion have a charge. And because part of the enzyme molecule uh, relies on ionic uh, bonds to keep the active site the correct shape if we change the charges in the solution by increasing or decreasing the pH that's going to affect the ionic bonds and the enzyme will no longer be able to keep the bonds correct and keep the active site in the correct shape okay so this is the reason why we have an effect uh, when we change the pH on enzyme action the enzymes can tolerate a little change in pH but not too much as you can see from the graph here if we had a pH of say around about 5 this enzyme here is not going to be able to work at all so that's the second factor we're looking at the third factor that we want to look at now is the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction and here I have a temperature that's not what I want I want substrate concentration there we go that's better so as we increase the substrate concentration we can see that the rate of the uh, reaction controlled by the enzyme gets higher and higher and higher or faster and faster until we reach a certain level where it uh, flattens out no matter how much more we increase the rate of sorry increase the substrate concentration the rate of reaction doesn't get any quicker why is that well let's have a look at what's going on in region one we have our concentration of enzyme which we're not going to change but we have a low concentration of our substrate molecule so this is our substrate and this is our enzyme and you can see that the enzymes are pretty much ready to accept a substrate the active sites are not occupied and so the rate of reaction can move on quite rapidly so this is what's going on we've got a couple of enzyme molecules here which are which have their active sites occupied but most of them don't have their active sites occupied this substrate molecule can collide and therefore react so we have um, a rate of reaction that is not limited by the amount of enzyme that's available now if we go up to point number two we can see that we have the same concentration of enzymes but more of the substrate uh, molecules given in the same volume so a higher concentration of substrate so what does that do there well we can see more of the enzyme molecule active sites have been occupied however there are still some that are free so if we increase the reaction we can still if we increase the substrate concentration we can increase the reaction a bit further but we get to a point at point three where we have a high concentration of uh, substrate and at any one given time all the enzyme sub all the enzyme active sites are occupied so this is occupied here that will produce the product um, but at any one moment given in time these will be full so these uh, basically substrate molecules are not able to combine um, as quickly as they would like to so no matter how much you increase the substrate concentration this reaction is not going to be able to go any faster okay so you should be able to use a diagram like this or at least uh, be able to explain something like this from a graph we can see here for this point of the graph that the substrate concentration is limiting the rate of the reaction there because we have we know this because when we increase the substrate concentration we get a faster rate of reaction over here the substrate is no longer limiting the rate of reaction uh, because the reaction there is going at maximum rate all the active sites are uh, filled at any one given point 
and therefore the reaction can't go any faster. Okay, so that's uh, three factors we looked at, temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. Uh, you may need to go over this uh, one or two times more just to make sure you've got it and understood it. But apart from that, that's me done for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.